हेलो एवरीवन माय नेम इज चिरंजी मिश्रा आई एम ए फैकल्टी एट किट पॉलिटेक्निक पॉलिटेक्निक भुवनेश्वर टुडे आई एम हियर टू गिव ए प्रेजेंटेशन ऑन द टॉपिक शेयर फोर्स एंड बेंडिंग मोमेंट व्हिच कवर्स एंड स्ट्रक्चरल मैकेनिक्स व्हिच इज अ वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट सब्जेक्ट इन द फील्ड ऑफ सिविल इंजीनियरिंग सो व्हाट व्हाट आर द टॉपिक्स दैट वी वी आर गोना कवर इन दिस पीपीटी फर्स्ट इज दीज आर द आउटलाइंस shear force bending moment and two examples based on shear force diagram and a bending moment diagram before proceeding of going going ahead with the shear force and bending moment uh, concept let us first know what are the types of support so these are the types of support that we have first is roller support hinge support fixed support and last one is guided roller support first we'll come to know that what are what are these support these are diagrams that i have made that the types of support first one is roller support roller support in practical example where do you see it the roller support roller support you will see during trolley bags you have mostly you are using trolley bags while traveling to uh, other state or other places trolley bag that support that uh, at the bottom of the bag that roller is there the wheels are there that we call it as a roller support hinge support is very common hinge support that we which you see in the doors the hinges are there which we can easily rotate the doors that is the hinge support and last one is the fixed support fixed support is neither there is no no, no movement is there completely fixed at one side see completely fixed now we'll try to analyze what are the reactions that exhibit by the that are exhibited by this supports first roller support roller support there is only one reaction that is upward reaction that is denoted by ba that is normal reaction upward reaction normally there are three reactions that are present in a 2d structure that one is uh, vertical horizontal one another comes is a moment so here only once uh, one reaction is coming that is vertical reaction now in hinge support this is how the roller support is denoted and this is how is hinge support is denoted and what are the reaction in the hinge support there are two reactions in the hinge support there is now first to understand what are the reactions what do you mean by reaction suppose i am standing here I am, I am able to stand stand here. My weight is acting downward, and we know that Newton's third law. Every every action has an equal and opposite reaction. I am able to stand here because there is an opposite reaction coming from the down. So every support gives some some reactions. As I have told earlier, as I have told earlier, three reactions are there: horizontal reaction, vertical reaction, and another one is a moment reaction. So on the hinge support, there are two reactions. horizontal reaction and vertical reaction there is no moment reaction why there is no moment reaction analyze it with the door we can easily rotate the door is there any reaction coming if the door is not able to rotate properly then the reaction will come that is a moment reaction but the door is easily being rotated so so the moment reaction will not come in the hinge support and last one is the fixed support here all the three reactions will come horizontal reaction vertical reaction and moment reaction see horizontal reaction it comes in the horizontal direction vertical direction and moment direction moment reaction will come these are the these are the three types of basic three types of supports now we'll come to types of beams the shear force and bending moment diagram general generally we do uh, in the beams so first we'll discuss what are the types of beams these are the types of beams first is simply supported cantilever continuous beam propped cantilever and fixed beam last one is fixed fixed beam these are the diagrams that we have by the help of we note the types of beams first is simply supported see this is one one end is hinge support and, and another and another end it is the roller support and another end is with the roller support now second one is the cantilever in cantilever there is only uh, one end is free one end is completely free and other end is fixed 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 now you have learned how what is a fixed support now here, here is the fixed support other end is free now what is a continuous beam continuous beam continuous it will be placed the support will be continuously placed see first is hinge, hinge support roller support roller support and roller support this is a continuous beam what is a propped cantilever prop cantilever means that if one end is fixed other other end will be hinged or will be roller supported see one end is fixed and other end is roller supported 
and last one is the fixed beam fixed beam means both ends will be fixed these are the fixed support left hand side is the fixed support and right hand side is also the fixed support now these two are indeterminate structure that is a different topic that we'll discuss in the later um, later subject that is structural analysis these two beams are indeterminate structure uh, even continuous beam also is indeterminate structure these two are is the determinate structure now we'll move forward to the next slide we are, I think we will be able to understand what are the types of beams. These are the types of beams. Now, before going to the doing the bending moment diagram and shear force diagram, first we first we learned about the types of support. Then types of beams we learned. Then third one is the types of loading. What are the types of loading that we will learn about uh, during this course? These are the types of loading that we generally get during the during our daily experiences. First one is concentrated point load. See, this, I have drawn a big beam. This is what, what what is the what is this type of beam? This is a simply supported beam. See, left hand corner it is simply supported, and further right hand support it is roller supported. So this is a simply supported beam. So what are the types of load? I have shown all the types of load. For concentrated load. What do you concentrated point load? So what do you mean by concentrated point load? It means in a beam that at what one point that the load is acting. You understand what at one point this load is acting. Suppose you have seen what, what beams in the structures in your roofs, the beams will be there. Suppose I am standing here, I am standing in a beam, in a beam. Uh, my load is acting at a one point, no variation in the load. Uh, my load is acting at one point. So that is what? Concentrated point load. Second one is the uniformly distributed load. See, this is how the symbol is given, uniformly distributed load means what? The load is uniformly distributed. It is denoted by, for example, it will be denoted by 5 kN per meter. What do you mean by 5 kN per meter? Means in per meter distance, the, five, the load acting is 5 kN. Suppose this is 3 meter, so what is the total load? 5 into 3, 15 kN. So this is a uniformly distributed load. This is how it is denoted. The next one is a uniformly varying load. See, these are the types of uniformly varying load. Means at one point there is zero load. At, at, at constantly it is increasing. At constantly at one point it is increasing. It is a uniformly varying load. And this is a concentrated moment. These are the concentrated moments at more than one point. Then this is not important for, for time now basis. For the time being, this is what it will be. These are the types of load that we will be dealing with. Now we will come to the main part. What is a shear force? Then our main topic that the slide, what the presentation was about shear force and bending moment. That here we will come to the main topic. What is shear force? Shear force at any section of beam is algebraic sum of all the transverse forces either moving left to right or right to left in the span of beam. Now we'll try to understand what do you mean by this. These are the these are three or two or three terms are there that is you need to focus on. First is transverse. What do you mean by transverse? Suppose this is the beam. This is the longitudinal direction and the, this is the transverse direction. Means the force that you are dealing with is only the transverse direction forces. We are not dealing with the longitudinal forces. We are only dealing with the transverse forces. Now what is shear force? Suppose you take a section. What do you mean by a section? Suppose this is a beam, we cut it at any distance. This is for, for example, this is 5 meter. This is 5 meter beam. We cut it, so suppose we cut it at 1, one meter. So this is 1 meter. So either moving left to right or right to left, the algebraic sum of all the forces, all the transverse forces that are acting in, in this junction, in this section, either from left to right or right to left, all the transverse forces, the combination of all the forces the, at that section, it's called as a shear force. You have, uh, need to understand that you, either you are moving from left to right or right to left. You are not considering the whole whole structure of the beam. Either moving left to right or right to left of the beam. The whole transverse forces, combination of transverse forces that are acting, that we call it as a shear force in the that that section. The shear force is acting. That much shear force is acting. Next is bending moment in a beam. What is the definition of bending moment? Bending moment at any section of beam is the algebraic summation of moment given by transverse loading either moving left to right or right to left in span of beam simply it is an extension of the shear force definition what what do you mean by moment moment formula what is the we have learned in the 10th class 9th or 10th class what is the formula of moment moment is force into perpendicular distance simply we know the force i have told earlier the transverse forces that are acting that is the force and what is the distance for example, you are calculating the bending moment at a section. Suppose this is 5 meter. As I have discussed earlier, suppose this beam is 5 meter. We are now we have to calculate the bending moment at a section of 1 meter. So what is so again? You will move from either left to right or right to left of the section. 
either if you are moving from left to right this is the force is acting 5 kilo newton and the what is the bending moment at this section 5 into this distance suppose the distance is 1 meter so 5 into 1 is equal to 5 kilo newton meter simply it is the extension of the shear force if a section is taken either moving left to right or right to left so the all the forces moments consider at that section it's called to be the bending moment at that section now how what are what are the steps used in drawing a shear force diagram and bending moment diagram what are the steps then i will discuss about the steps first major step is the sign convention so uh, what, what is the sign sign convention can be taken according to you but, but generally what is followed is this suppose this is a beam and this is a section is taken now we now we are moving first 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 we are moving from left to right so left to right so up, the upward force is taken to be positive and downward force is taken to be negative suppose you are moving from right to left at this section right to left so what is the if the downward force will be positive and upward force will be negative this is the sign convention this is the sign convention for shear force now what is the sign convention for bending moment so this is the beam the clockwise moment the clockwise moment from if, if you are moving from left to right the clockwise moment will be given by will be given as positive and the anti clockwise moment will be given as negative now, now if you are moving from right to left simple simple the clock, uh, anti clockwise moment will be given as positive and clockwise moment will be given as negative this is a little bit confusing if you practice more and more sums it will, will be you will be easily get acquainted with it now see now how will be the shear force and bending moment diagram look if the, with, the, with the different types of loading first we have learned what are the different types of loading so accordingly the different types of loading these are the shapes of the shear force diagram and bending moment diagram this can be easily derived by the equation that will be formed at the mathematical equation that will be formed this can be easily derived how how it come the straight line for example y is equal to mx you have learned y is equal to mx what what, what type of line it will give it will, will it give a parabola or ellipse or hyperbola or a straight line it will give a straight line so if there is no load in a section in a section if there is no load no load present then shear force what is what will be the shape of the shear force diagram it will be the straight line then what will be the shape of the bending moment diagram it will be inclined straight line means incline one is the straight line this is straight line this is the section this is a straight line this will be straight line and what will the inclined straight line there will be inclined there will, there will be some slope will be the inclined straight line so for udl what is udl uniformly distributed load the shear shape of the shear force diagram will be what inclined straight line and the bending moment diagram will be two degree curve Uh, now what do now last one is the uniformly bearing load so what will the shape of the uh, shear force diagram shear force diagram will be two degree curve and shape of the bending moment diagram will be three degree curve now i have taken an example to demonstrate how to draw a shear force diagram and a bending moment diagram so now see what is what what is this type of beam called one end is fixed see one end is fixed other end is free so what what is it what is this type of beam this is a cantilever beam now these are the types of load that are acting what is this type of load from b to c this is uniformly distributed load how it is uh, what is the uh, value it is value is 6 kN per meter means per meter 6 kN is acting what is the distance it is 3 meter so now we will see how we will draw the shear force diagram and bending moment diagram now we'll first first uh, st uh, step is we will calculate the reactions now uh, where where will the reactions come reactions will only come at the support this this end is free so this end will, will be easily moved see the load is acting this is the beam so how how will the deflected shape the deflected will be like this it will de it will not deflect upward it will deflect right uh, downward the load is acting downward the deflected shape will be what downward and what is the reactions coming see i have, I have told there are three reactions one is the vertical reaction horizontal reaction and is the moment so we will now we will calculate the uh, what types of the reactions we will calculate so what will the value of vertical reaction is there any uh, is there any what are the vertical loads that are acting see this 6 into 3 total total is what 6 into 3 18 kilometer what in what direction it is acting it is acting downward but our reaction is what upward so for, for equilibrium condition so what vertical reaction upward is equal to downward reaction downward loading reaction so what 6 into 3 is equal to ba uh, other uh, if any other load is there the downward load any other there no not there any no load is not there only 6 6 kilometer per meter load is there so ba is equal to what 6 18 kilometer now we'll calculate the moment what will be the moment see moment first what is the moment formula is what force into distance 
See what is the force acting? If this is the force acting. Six into three total kilonewton. Now where will be this force acting? See this uh, bearing load, the uniformly distributed load. Where will be acting? It will act at the middle of the span. This three meter will act at the middle. So what? What will the moment? What is the uh, moment at the uh, support? See six into three into two plus one point five. Six into three is the total force. Total force. For, we know that moment formula is force into distance. Total force is six into three. And what will be the distance from the support? See. This is two meter plus one point five. It will act at the middle, so three by two is one point five. Two meter plus one point five. Two plus one point five. Total is coming what? Sixty three kilonewton per sixty three kilonewton meter. Now we have calculated BA and MA. Now what will be HA? What will be HA? What will what will be HA? See in the horizontal direction, is there any force acting? All at the transverse forces. Is there any horizontal the forces acting? So what will be there? Uh, automatically, H A will be zero as there is no force acting in the horizontal direction. So H A will be what? Zero automatically. It will be zero. Now we'll see the calculate the shear force. See, I have told either we'll move from right to left or left to right. So here I am moving from right to left. Okay. So what will the shear force at C? What are the, all the transverse forces acting at the C? What are the, all the transverse forces acting? You will tell that sir, it is acting six kilonewton per meter. No. It is a uniformly varying load, but this distance, be it infinite, infinite, small, infinitely small, this distance, is there any load acting? No load acting. It is zero. It is zero. So shear force at this G is zero. It is zero. So when we will move forward, we will from C to A. When right to left, we'll, when we will move. Now shear force at B is how much? See, at B we will see only this section. Right to left, this section we will only see. So what is the total force acting? Six into three what? Eighteen kilonewton. So total force is what? What is acting? Six into three, eighteen kilonewton. So shear force at B is what? Eighteen kilonewton. Now what will be the shear force at A? From B to C, it is acting uniformly distributed load, six kilonewton per meter. But is there any load acting at A, A, A to B? No load, zero load. So that will be the, remain the same. Six into three, eighteen kilonewton. So shear force at A is what? Eighteen kilonewton. Same force will be there. Now we'll see what. Now this is the shear force values that we have calculated. Now we will do that in a diagram in the later slide. Now we'll first we'll see what are the bending moment. See, so when we are moving from right to left, what is the bending moment at C? We I have told you that at C the load is acting was infinitely small load, so almost equal to zero. So if force is equal to zero, moment is will be automatically zero because what moment is equal to what force into distance. So what will the force is equal to a moment is equal to what zero. Now at B, let's see B. What will the moment bending bending moment at B? We are only considering this section. We are ignoring this section. Right to left, this section. We are BC. We are considering. So what is the force? What is the moment acting? See, total force is what? What moment is force into distance? See, total force is what? Six into three, eighteen kilonewton. Now what is the distance acting? It is acting at the middle. Means three by two. So what will be six into three into one point five? There comes it will come as twenty seven kilonewton meter. Now we have found all the reactions, all the shear force, all the uh, bending moments at the at a uh, critical uh, critical uh, points. C, B, A are all the critical points. So now we will draw this in the next slide. See, this is this is how will the shear force diagram will be drawn. So you will represent this. First, you will draw the question, and the line will be extended at the critical points. First is shear force diagram, and the last one is the bending moment diagram. These are the uh, values that we have uh, cal uh, calculated. Now from B to C, I have told. From one slide, there is that if the, if the load is uniformly distributed, the shear force diagram will be inclined straight line. So see, the inclined straight line will be there. At C, it, it is zero, and at B, is, it's coming as 18 kilonewton. So it will be a straight line. From A to B, is there any load? No load is there, so it will be a straight line. It will all be positive. So it is shear force. This is this is the shear force diagram. Now we will ask the questions are how it is positive. So first, I have taught you the sign convention. Refer to that sign convention. It will all be positive. Now next one is the bending moment diagram. See. From C, C it is we have calculated at C what is the bending moment? It is zero. At B is something is coming. What is? It is six. Uh, B I have not. Uh, let me see. C at B what will be calculated? Twenty seven kilonewton meter. So at B is 27 kilonewton meter, but B, from B to C, how is the load acting? It is uniformly distributed load. So what what will the uh, shape of the curve? So it will be two degree curve. But from B to A, is there any load acting? No load acting. So we have I have taught you I have told you the, how will the shape of the diagram? It will be inclined straight line. So so here from to from B to 
a it will join the inclined straight line it will be a one degree curve but it will be negative again i have told you the sign convention it will all be a negative so this is the answer of the question this is how we will draw a shear force diagram and a bending moment diagram thank you